Welcome to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. And this show is about Plymouth County real estate. Our headline for the month was, Plymouth County real estate market shows strength as 2016 closes. So we're doing this show in January. We're talking about the December numbers as well as the overall numbers for 2016. I have a great guest coming on this show, Jennifer Kern Rizzo the new president of the Plymouth and South Shore Association of Realtors. We're going to talk a little bit about some of our notable land records. So let's get right to the numbers. Uh, the registry was very busy over the year. We recorded 10,000 more documents in 16 than in 15. Uh, but December numbers were also very strong. 935 deeds in December. Uh, compared to the 939 in November, 1% more than last December. For the year, though, we recorded 15% more deeds, so that's 15% more sales of property for the year in terms of mortgages. It was also a very strong year, 2,233 mortgages recorded in December, more than the 2,185 in November. 41% compared to last December, and again, yet a date up 13%. We all know that mortgage rates are rising, but they're still in very good shape. Foreclosures, which can be very troublesome, uh, are kind of stabilizing a little bit. 60 foreclosure deeds in December, more than the 54 in November, a little less than last December, and over the course of the year, 30% higher. Foreclosure notices, which is the first notice and document that people receive at the registry when people are in trouble, have gone down a lot, 2% <clears throat> less this year than last year. And if you go at our, to our image number five, which lists all the foreclosure deeds and notices by community, then um, you can see that foreclosures are still happening in many communities. A training room will be open next on Thursday, February 2nd, an opportunity to be trained for free on our internet site. Call our office uh, to sign up, 508-830-9290. Uh, our linked index project is now back uh, to 1900 and continuing to go back to 1685. There have been some changes in the law relative to the notary law. We welcome Rochester Historical Society to our office for a display, and we're doing office hours in the town of Bridgewater on the uh, 19th of January. So my guest in the next segment of the show, as I mentioned, is the new past president, Jennifer Kern Rizzo. So we'll see you in the next segment. Welcome back to the Registers Report. Again, my name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. In this segment of the show, we always try to do something educational in nature. We've had surveyors, we've had commercial real estate brokers, we've had assessors, anyone involved in the real estate community and a particular interest in the real estate community and the, one of the leaders in, in, the, in the field of making things happen for people are the realtors. And I have a great guest today. I have Jennifer Kern Rizzo. Welcome back, Jennifer. Thank you for having me, John. You've been, been on the show before. And uh, Jennifer is the new president of the Plymouth and South Shore Association of Realtors. Yes. And I know you've been a guest before and done a great job in the past. So welcome back. Thank you for having me again. And congratulations on your new uh, role. Thank you very much. So, yeah. um, it's very exciting because we are actually transitioning into a new name for our, our organization and we're no longer going to be called the Plymouth and South Shore Association of Realtors. We um, hired a rebranding team and we're going to be called South Shore Realtors for short. So okay. we're okay. really excited about that. Good. 
And that changes all your websites and all yes. that stuff. Yes, <laughs> so we'll be changing the I websites, oh, good. Um, and all the you know everything will be rebranded to oh. just so sure. Realtor oh, is a nice, short new name for us. <laughs> so why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about how you got into the real estate business? Um, I got into the business actually right out of college. I went to business school at Suffolk University. And when I graduated, I knew I wanted to have my own business. And so I decided I would take the real estate course. I took the course, liked it. And um, you know, I had my license, so I went to work for um, a company. I started at Jack Conway and Company in Quincy. And uh, from there, I went to work for another company, Century 21 Network in Quincy. And also, uh, from Century 21 Network, uh, Richmond Associates, we, um, once our franchise was up there, we decided we would merge with another company. And I now work for Success Real Estate. Same office right in Quincy. Oh, great. So, and I've been in it for uh, 12 years now. Oh, great. So why don't you tell our viewers, I know the name has changed, but You've been doing the same thing for a number of years now as an organization, mm -hmm. a great organization, the second largest realtors organization in Massachusetts. So why don't you tell them a little bit about what you do as an organization? So as an organization, mm -hmm. um, and we are approximately 2,900 members, uh, we have Realtor members, but then we also have affiliate members. So that could be anybody such as um, that, that has something to do with the real estate industry. So it could be um, home inspectors, mortgage people, real estate attorneys, um, anybody really. It could be an electrician, a plumber, anybody that kind of touches the real estate mm -hmm. um, it, insurance, uh, for instance. So there's a lot of other industries that, that touch the real estate experience. So there's a lot of those type of members too, and they, they have sponsorship roles in the organization as well. Um, but to uh, be a realtor, you have to uh, first join the National Association mm -hmm. of Realtors, and then you join the Massachusetts Association, and then you join your local board, and our local board is the South Shore Realtors. Um, with the South Shore Realtors, there's so many um, benefits to being a realtor and not just a licensee or a, a sales agent. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many um, educational uh, benefits um, where really on top of everything as far as technology. We're at the, you know, as realtors, we're on the cutting edge of everything that's going on in the real estate industry. Um, so there's a benefit at not just the local association level, but at the Massachusetts level and at the national level. We can take classes, go to seminars, go to conventions. Um, I just went to the national convention in oh, Orlando, great. which was great. Oh, great. Um, and I, you know, there's just this, there's a lot of um, benefit to being a realtor and not just a, a sales agent. And your organization is located where? We're located in Pembroke. Right. Um, the office is at 48 Scusset Street in okay. Pembroke. Yeah, I've been up there. I've been part of programs up there. It's a great, yep. great easy access, great location. Yeah, it's right off the highway, which great. Is, is great for all so, of us. So I know I'll, I'll touch a little bit more on you do a lot of CEUs, a lot of mm -hmm. training. A lot of training. Want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. So every um, every sales agent has to take continuing education courses mm -hmm. in order to renew their license, and those courses can be taken at the local association level. Mm -hmm. um, they can also be taken at the state level as well. But okay. um, but we offer a lot of continuing education courses as well as other courses. I mean, there's other. We have national speakers come um, and and talk at our at our local board and uh, we also have um, technology people come um, there's always something going on at the association it's almost hard to keep up with everything no, that's no, going I, on uh, yeah, <laughs> there's we, so many programs yeah we had a, a recent uh, thing happen with the legislature that's going to allow us to pos lead to the, down the road to electronically record land court documents and we know, everyone knows that technology changes so fast mm -hmm. that you really have to keep up with it. And it you know, hopefully is all for the benefit of efficiencies and but servicing people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything recently that's kind of new to you, t technology wise? You know? um, as far as technology, um, in the last couple of years, I've seen a lot more electronically as far as signatures. So, <clears throat> It used to be that we were running around all over the place 
for signatures on a, like a, an offer or a purchase sure. and sale agreement. But now, everything's done electronically. Right. I, you know, every, you know, buyer or seller that I have, most of them will sign things electronically, which saves a lot of time mm -hmm. and energy um, going to meet with the clients. I mean, we still have a lot of personal meetings, sure. but that just definitely speeds up the process, especially with this market and the multiple offer situations right. where you need uh, to get things in quickly. It definitely helps to get everything done electronically. Well, a lot of stories out there about, uh, you know, because of the short inventory, Exactly. An offer comes in and another one comes in and, you know, all above the original ask, asking price in some cases, mm -hmm. you know. So it's a challenge, I'm sure, to kind of referee that, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about uh, 2016. Um, I know from our perspective of recording documents, it was a, it was a strong year, uh, stronger than the year before. Was that the same in your practice and in your business? Yes, 2016 was an excellent year for real estate. Um, like you said, it was a little bit more challenging, I think, for buyers mm -hmm. because buyers are in the situation where there's going to be on most properties multiple offers. Mm -hmm. So there's all these buyers and then there's just the one property because of the shortage of inventory. So it, it, it was, I, th I think, a little bit difficult, a little bit more for the buyers, but mm -hmm. I think that it was definitely it's a good real estate market. Prices are up, um, but yeah, it 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 is. It was a, just a little bit challenging when, and I think the buy, buyers. It's difficult not to get emotionally attached to a house, <laughs> sure. so they get emotionally attached. But then there's multiple offer situations, so that can be a little bit difficult. And I but can it imagine was still, you, you you make an offer only when you've decided this can be the place for the rest of your life, and exactly if you if you get outbid or chosen, not chosen for other reasons. It has to be frustrating and you have to re-guide them to another property. Exactly. Yeah, you have yeah. to find them something right, else. But right. yeah, I tell them you can't really fall in love. <laughs> yeah, right. Till all the papers are signed. Right? Yeah, exactly, Good. exactly. Good, and how do you see uh, 2017 going? 2017 is supposed to be similar. Right. Um, we, we take a lot of, I've taken so many courses and, and um, <clears throat> gone to these leadership seminars where there's these economists um, from you know the National Association of Realtors or from Realtor.com and they're saying that they think that 2017 is gonna be very similar with the shortage of inventory. Mm -hmm. So that we're, go we're going to continue to see that shortage of inventory and the, the whole bidding war situation going on um, and the multiple offer situations going on. Um, interest rates have gone up a little bit, right. so um, you know that also sometimes makes people nervous that they've got to get on the bandwagon and they've got to buy. So there's definitely plenty of buyers out there, but we need more inventory. We need more people to sell. So what percentage of the buyers come to you pre-qualified? Oh, I would say almost all of them. Yeah. There's sure. there's very few buyers that now don't have a pre-approval already in hand. If they don't, they can easily get one. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that with the internet, most buyers are looking online way before they even call mm -hmm. us as, as agents. So they, they already know that they have to be pre-approved, especially in this type of market where you have to be ready to, um, you know, you have to have all your paperwork ready so that when you do see something, you can put in that offer really quickly. So, so that, explains the, the buyer side but I know you do buyers and sellers yep so what what have the sellers been faced with in 2016 uh, I think that there's um, some challenge with sellers as for sellers as well um, a lot of my sellers have um, they know they're going to sell their house. They mm -hmm. know we're going to sell it. Um, it's just, and they know we're probably going to sell it quickly. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, the properties sell at the first open house. Um, so the problem is, is that then they don't know where they're going to go because of the shortage of inventory. So there are a lot of sellers um, that are kind of in limbo. They're waiting, and they don't know necessarily where they're going to go once they, they sell their home. Um, so some people th that explains a little bit more of the shortage and that's why the shortage continues I think because they don't know 
what they're going to buy. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of waiting to put their houses on the market. Um, so, but a lot of sellers are renting for you know a short, getting short-term rentals and then going into something Making more a decision permanent. Decision where they want to be. And exactly. So they that. buy it themselves a little bit more yeah, time. That's great. That's yeah. great. So if you were watching this show and thinking of putting your property on the market, mm -hmm. um, what kind of tips would you give them to prepare their property for that listing? I always think um, in preparing, I think that you need to contact a local realtor mm -hmm. um, and have that realtor put you into the MLS system, which is the multiple listing service, okay. ahead of time. So even before, it used to be that you didn't even look at property until you had a signed purchase and sale agreement on your house. But now, I think that it, it's helpful for the, the sellers to start to look at what's out there on the market and familiarize themselves with what's on the market with a realtor ahead of time so that they kind of know where they're going to go and they know what they're going to go into. Okay. Um, and they get, you know, not necessarily that they're going to make an offer before they have their house in the market, but that they're going to familiarize themselves with what's going to with what's out there and what's going on in the marketplace and the whole process and the multiple offer situations and all of that kind of stuff before they even you know list their property um, and then just the, the the regular old stuff about about listing a property i always tell people to declutter declutter mm -hmm. is the number one thing i think mm -hmm. and in selling a property is to um, you know clean out everything extra take away personal photos out of a property so that people, when they come into your property, they can picture themselves and their own families in that, that home. So, so I have had uh, realtors on the show and the, you know, the staging issue you're talking mm -hmm. about is uh, something everyone talks about. Do you actually have classes on that as a realtor or do you learn that word of mouth from other realtors as you go around? Um, I think both, yeah. y you know, you kind of, pick it up along the way and you You're know sure. what's going to make things sell. Right. Um, on every property that I list, I always kind of stage the property mm -hmm. um, as well with the sellers. Um, if there's you know, not a lot of furniture or not a lot of stuff in there, sometimes you bring things in. I have a whole office full of things that I keep to bring into a property. And sometimes, I mean, there's too much stuff, so you get rid of things. I mean, clearing clearing off counter space, making mm -hmm. things look, you know, staged is definitely very important. But there are classes you can take on staging okay. as well. And there's professional stagers as well that can be hired oh, really? and okay. companies that, you know, you can um, you can rent furniture from. And there's all kinds of, of right. situations. But yeah, the most realtors I think will help you with the with the staging as well. So we're entering into a period uh, of time mm -hmm. actually started around early holidays through early March that we never know what the weather is like around here and that brings challenges. Any yes. particular <laughs> thoughts on any of those types of things? Well, I mean, it definitely when there's three feet of snow, it's right. not necessarily, yeah. right. <laughs> uh, people aren't necessarily thinking about going to look I at I remember, homes. was it not last year, but the year before, what a tough winter we had. And, how that did affect people's ability to get around and look at properties and affected the marketplace a little bit, kind of pushed it back a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, it definitely, um, it, it's definitely a challenge, of course, um, in New England. But I think that where there are maybe less fires out in the three feet of snow, that is a, a nice opportunity sometimes for people to get out and, and you know, it's maybe a little less competition. So right. it's not a terrible time, definitely. So I, I, I got a signal, but I, I want to make sure you get a chance to mention your organization's role in promoting private property ownership and mm -hmm. home ownership. So, as realtors, we advocate for homeowners um, in, with legislative issues, um, and we support legislators uh, that will uh, help us to fight for the, the rights of, of homeowners and those personal property rights. Um, and we have had some realtor party wins, which have been excellent. Um, and we've successfully opposed um, doing away with the mortgage interest deduction, um, which is a huge benefit to any homeowner, and also um, 
we've successfully opposed the mandatory energy audits and scoring on all homes in Massachusetts, which is, that, that's a great thing. Um, that would not have been a good thing for homeowners, especially with the age of the homes in, in Massachusetts. Um, and then there's, a, there's, there's current issues that we're always working on, um, but the ones we're, we're focusing on, the issues we're focusing on right now are um, housing production, um, such as multifamilies and in-laws, um, and then building, permitting, and zoning uh, reform, and also uh, flood insurance reform and um, mortgage forgiveness uh, debt relief, and that would be when it comes to short sales and things like that. So. That's great. That's a pretty full plate when you combine that with your uh, real uh, life business. Yes, definitely. But this is, you know, something to definitely be passionate about. Um, that is probably um, the most important thing and the most um, important thing that differentiates, um, you know, Realtor members from just, you know, the licensee. Um, we adhere to a strict code of ethics and we also as realtor members um, we um, we raise our I'm trying to say we donate I should okay. say our own funds into um, what's called our PAC which is realtor political action committee okay. and with our PAC funds we use that to give to certain legislators, either party, they can be either mm -hmm. party, Republican or Democrat, it does not matter, um, but just to give those um, candidates that promote private property rights and help the homeowner. So as, an, as, a, as a realtor, we are the ones on the front lines, we are the ones that are fighting for the rights of homeowners. I don't know what other organization is doing that. There could be others, but we are definitely always doing that, and it's something very, very important. Um, there's so many um, issues that we're constantly um, lobbying, Great. either for or against. Um, we go to Beacon Hill once a year, um, and we all, we do a, a realtor day on the hill. It's okay. pretty cool. Great. And we meet with legislators. Um, and then we also go to Capitol Hill and we meet with legislators Great. there. Um, and and we definitely are always trying to protect personal property rights. So you're going to have a busy year ahead of you. Yes. Uh, you're promoting two causes. You're a private realtor yes. working <laughs> on your own. Yep. And you're heading up this organization with all the role of that. Yes. So can four of you is can you give your contact information first as a private realtor so mm -hmm. people could reach you for your business? Sure. Um, as a as a private realtor, um, I work for Success Real Estate in Quincy at 968 Hancock Street, and uh, my phone number is 617-548-1351, and my email is Jennifer J E N N I F E R Kern K E R N Realtor at gmail.com. And if there's a realtor out there that hasn't joined PASS and they want to join PASS, you want to give a contact information for Yes, so the PASS? contact information for PASS um, is the same uh, as it has always been, but it will be changing soon to Social mm -hmm. Realtors. But right, for right now, it's uh, www.passrealtors.com. Um, and again, we're located at 48 Scusset Street in Pembroke, and our phone number is 781-826. 5139. Great. Well, thank you very much again for coming on the show. Thank you very doing much. Doing a great job and a uh, happy new year. Good luck in 2017. Thank you. Happy great. new year. It's going to be a great year. Yeah, great. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger and millions more live in isolation. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. So I want to thank Jennifer Kern Rizzo for her presentation on behalf of the association. I think she'll do a great job uh, in that role as uh, the uh, Plymouth and South Shore Realtor Association goes into 2017. Real estate is a very important part of our economy, and it's great to see people like that that are uh, so involved in taking leadership of that organization. Uh, this segment of the show, we try to do something a little lighter in nature. 
Uh, we have a couple holidays this month. New Year's Day has passed us, Martin Luther King Day, Inauguration Day, uh, and Chinese New Year. Um, we always try to do some kind of connection to the month. Martin Luther King Day is a celebration of diversity and how um, uh, Plymouth County, in this particular case, in America to some degree, has dealt with the issue of race in America. Uh, you have a couple um, notable land records that are going to come across the screen. Uh, the New Guinea settlement at Parting Ways in Plymouth, uh, one of America's first free black settlements after the American Revolutionary War. Uh, the town of Plymouth gave land to uh, four black Revolutionary War veterans. They set it up. Uh, the site is on Route 80 in West Plymouth. You can get out of the car and walk around, and many of the uh, foundations are still in place, and there's a little memorial there identifying the settlement. Uh, the property is listed on the National Register of Historic Places uh, and protected by federal and state laws. Uh, the next notable land record uh, is the Tory House. The Tory House is, is in Bridgewater Center, uh, across the street from the new renovated Academy Building, which is used as the Bridgewater Town Hall. The Tory House was a stop on the Underground Railroad. It sheltered some very famous slaves, William and Ellen Crafts. Um, it's a very historical house. Uh, was taken over at one point from sympathizers of, of the Crown during the Revolutionary War. Uh, was made, maintained as an inn, uh, but on the way uh, north, after escaping from a plantation in the south, um, William and Ellen Crafts, one dressed up as a man and one dressed up as his slave. Um, they, they get all the way up, up into Boston and then they sail to England. Um, there's a sign on the side of that building in Bridgewater Square. And last but not least, the Island Grove Park was a site of pre-Civil War abolitionist meetings. It's a great jewel in the town. A wonderful memorial bridge dedicated to uh, veterans and those that lost their lives uh, fighting in the wars in Abington uh, that leads into the park. Um, it is a tremendous place to walk around and recreation and active uh, um, fishing, ice skating, and concerts that take place on that park. It is also on the National Register of Historic Places. I want to thank PAC TV for allowing me to do this show and share the information about the registry to the inhabitants of Plymouth County, Lorna Green Baker and Christine Richards from my office, and David Antoine from here at PAC TV uh, worked with me in putting this show together. Again, I had a great guest today. We, we talked about some of the numbers, and we are hopeful that 2017 is as successful real estate-wise as 2016 was. So I wish you all a very happy new year, and I'll see you next month. Thank you.